Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his lonely Of his precious blood and glory And I repented of my Oh, 
understand his word says he'll never leave us nor forsake us Amen. that doesn't give us the right to go out and sin and do everything else that's right but he said he'd never leave us so through our turmoils and our strifes we serve a mighty big God amen amen because he leaves I can face tomorrow because He lives. All my fears is gone because I know, yes, I know He holds the future. And life is worth living just because it is, because
Repeat after me with conviction in our heart and our spirit. Amen. Take them around. And as I always say, there's no dust in our Bibles because we use our Bibles. <laughs> Hallelujah. And repeat after me with conviction in our heart. This, 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 this is my Bible. Bible. This is this the, the truth, 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 the whole truth, truth, truth and nothing but the truth. truth. This is the invaluable word of God. God. Jesus, Jesus is the word. word. This is the good, good news, news, the good report, the one sound doctrine. This is what I believe in. Stand on, live by it, trust in. Amen. Amen. Gracias. We've been doing that for almost eight years. I've been doing it for about ten years since I started preaching and and uh, I always threaten that I'm going to have one of you get up and say it. I know Sister Heather can say it, praise God. Maybe we'll get Sister, we'll get Sister Sheila to say that one day. Or Brother Jose to come up here and say that. He said, repeat after you. <laughs> praise God. God is good. It's good to laugh. Amen. Gloria a Dios. Santo eres Señor. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Gracias. Let me, let me share a... Sunday school room story that Sister Heather might be able to use back with her students when we they come in. We we're expecting some today, but they didn't make it today. The teacher got up one morning and at the beginning of Sunday school she asked, Does anybody know the definition of repentance? And the little boy stood up and he goes, I know, teacher, I know, I know what repentance is. It means feeling really, really sorry about something that you shouldn't have done that's wrong. And she said, good answer. The little Johnny always had something to add to that. He was in the back of the class. And Sister Sharon, he looked at his hands and he said, teacher, teacher, I, I got a definition of repentance. Okay, Johnny, what's your definition of repentance? And he said to feel really, really sorry, like he said about doing something you shouldn't have done, but feeling so sorry about it that you won't do it again. That's repentance. That is repentance, praise God. I want you to turn this morning. And if you have your Bibles, we're going to be hitting quite a few scriptures today. Turn to the book of Acts, 2nd chapter, 38th verse. Peter was just in the upper room with another 119 people. Acts 2, Acts chapter 2, verse 38. And we know the, the scripture says that the room was filled like a mighty rushing wind. They could hear it, and there were cloven tongues of fire and every one's of their head, and they started to speak with new tongues. And Peter, who had already denied Christ three times, but was told by the angels to tell Peter after Christ had risen that he was risen and waiting for them and to tell Peter too. So Peter was forgiven. And Peter stood up among all of them and he started to preach the first true Holy Ghost message. And the Bible said, and I'm just paraphrasing here to get to verse 38, that they were crying out in their heart, what must we do? He's telling you, you crucified the one we've been waiting for. You crucified God's Son. You crucified the Messiah. And they cried out, what shall we do? And then Peter tells them what to do. Verse 38 of chapter 2 says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent! I want you to say repent. Repent! Repent! repent. <laughs> Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. This morning I wish many more were here in our church and elsewhere listening to this message this morning. God has put into my heart, and I pray the ones that are watching on Facebook really take heart to this. Repentance is not an emotion. Repentance is not an emotion. We get excited and we come and, and, and sometimes as a preacher, and I've seen pastors do it, not do it, do it deliberately, uh, Brother Bob, but they get excited and they're jumping around, as I said, jumping four feet in the air. 
and, and, and spitting and slinging snot and everything else, and they have a joy for the Lord, and, 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 and people get excited when they see that. I've had some people say, my, my pastor is just a deadhead pastor. He gets up there, and he'll read some scripture and talk, and that's it. How many people know that's okay, too? Uh -huh. You don't have to jump five or four feet in the air, praise God. Yeah. I remember watching on a, a video one time, and it was a big convention of, uh, of a Baptist organization, and it doesn't matter if you're Baptist, whatever you call yourself, Pentecost, non-denomination, it's all one church of the living God. We have to remember that. Amen. And they had a man in his 80s get up, and he had this very quiet voice, and very quiet and calm, and he's just reading scripture, and he's talking about the Lord quite and uh, me and another pastor were listening to him. Man, we had to repent afterwards. Talk about repentance. And we said something like, man, that's not going to stir anybody up, is it? But how many people know it's not the man or the woman that's preaching that stirs people up as a testimony? It's God coming through that person that stirs them up. He gets up. He gets done, I should say. We saw all these people coming up the altar call. There was a note that said 38 people gave their lives to Jesus Christ that day. And we're looking at each other saying, wow, we just learned something today. We get emotional, that's okay. I have a loud mouth talk, a loud mouth emotion. I don't need a microphone at times. But how many people know that, that that's, that's how God is using me? But I can be as quiet as a church mouse and get the same message across too, because God will use some people that way. The unfortunate thing, when we get excited, sometimes that excitement carries over to somebody else. You ever have somebody get excited about maybe uh, receiving a gift or just hearing some good news? And you get excited because they're jumping up and down and excited and say, what's the good news? Or what gift did you get? You don't even know what it is, but you're excited because they're excited. We do that in church. We, we, we come up and we give our hearts to Jesus Christ because everybody's excited. The songs are good. The preaching is good. Uh, the atmosphere is good. Good and conducive. So we come on up and we, we, we do a sinner's prayer and we cry out to God, God, save me. But it's not a decision that we made with our will, but it's an emotional decision that we made. I want to wake some people up today. It's an emotional decision that we made. How many people know you can be excited about something one day and not as excited the next day? The enthusiasm level goes down. Now you, you get in your car and you go home and you're still excited. That excitement might go for a week. It might go for a month. It might even go for a few years. But is it true repentance? How many times have we seen a, a person come up to the altar and, and that enthusiasm dies down and, 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 and they start having problems and I thought when you became a Christian, Bob, you weren't going to have any more problems. Boy, was I probably mistaken. When you become a Christian, it's like putting a, a target on you. Satan is going to do whatever he's got to do to bring you down. Not to, that he's going to steal your soul, but if he can get you hurt enough where you can't give him glory, if he can get you hurt enough where you don't want to go to church, if he can get you hurt enough or bothered enough or stirred up terribly in your spirit where you don't want to witness He's won his little battle. Yes. He may not have your soul, but if you're a discouraged Christian, if you've lost hope, if you've lost that joy, but see, we gotta, we got to start telling the devil, I can't lose my joy because my joy comes from God. Right. I know I have the Spirit of God within me, and the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. I have it already. We have to remind ourselves and remind Satan of what God has given us, and he's not taking it back. But if he can get you feel defeated, you're not going to witness like he needs to. Like you need to. But the problem is this. If there is not true repentance, and the tire meets the road, and we have adversities, now I don't know about this Jesus thing. I was so happy for a few weeks, Bob, but now it's just, man, I'm going through misery. Jose, I don't know about this. I'm not going to go to church anymore. Sometimes the devil uses my thoughts in their mind. I don't want to be a false face, so I won't go to church. I don't want to be a phony, so I, I won't go to church. How many people know that when you start feeling those crazy thoughts, that's when you need to get yourself in church? That's when you need to be uplifted by your brothers and sisters? Even the best of saints have a down period sometimes. Elijah calls fire down from heaven. 
450 uh, prophets of Baal are, are killed, and, and another 400 of uh, the prophets of Asher are killed. And we read in the next chapter, he's running for his life because of a story he hears a mention that Jezebel wants him dead. How can you be up one day and down the next day? Well, thank God he was still a man of God. But if we're not truly repentant, and it's just based on emotion, those emotions will die down. No. And then we're out of church. Yes, it is. We're back out drinking. Back out drugging. Back out on the world. I don't have to list all every. We know what people do. People, as we once were like them. So thank God for that amazing grace. Thank God for that amazing grace. True repentance, Sister Kim, has to come from making a decision, saying, you know what? I choose Christ. I choose Christ no matter what. Even when I don't feel it, I'm going to do the work for Jesus Christ. Amen. Even when the enemy attacks, and I don't want to get up, I don't want to say anything, I'm going to get up and raise my hand and testify to the Lord and give him glory. That's the sign of maturity. That's the sign of true repentance. Going above what some people might call the call of duty. Going that little further when you when you have somebody that has passed on. When you when you when you have your finances that are in disarray, when you've heard the worst news possible about your children, can you still get up and be a witness for Jesus Christ? Can you still be up and show that light that God has given you? Praise God. That's where we know that we've been truly repentant. We had one young man that used to come up here for prayer a number of years ago. He had been up no less than seven times for salvation within about three months. Mm -hmm. How many times do you have to get saved? Once. Once. I love, you know, uh, sometimes we talk about conversion, people being converted. It's like pregnancy. Sometimes you can have a false pregnancy. How many people understand that? Amen. We can have a false spiritual birth. No man will see the kingdom of God unless he's been born again. No woman will see the kingdom of God unless they're born again. The Bible, as we know, is written up into two sections. The Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament was written in, in Hebrew. The New Testament was written basically in Greek, a little Aramaic, but Greek. And the word repent is defined a little bit differently in the Hebrew language than it is from the Greek language. Let me share what the Greek language says about repentance, the definition of it, and also the, all the secular languages that are out there today in modern times. Here's what repentance is. To change your mind. To change the way that you think. To change your mind. To have a new way of thinking. The Bible says, do not be conformed to this world, but be what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. So it's to change your mind, to, to have a new understanding of stuff. I can't think upon these things. I need to think Amen. upon those things over here. I can't think about the past. I can't think about the old man. I can't think about the old one. I need to think about something else. I need to have my mind thinking about Jesus Christ. I hope I'm getting across a little bit today. We go into the Hebrew language, and it basically means this, to go into a different direction, uh -huh. to make a 180 degree turn. Amen. In other words, I was going this way to a life of sin over here, and, and this is where I feel comfortable with, and, 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 and I'm partying, I'm having a good time and all that, but I'm lacking something inside. i got a void inside of me that is really eating me up. So I try to fill that void sharing with work. I try to fill it with affairs. I try to fill it with booze. I try to fill it with drugs. Everything. But it doesn't seem to satisfy me. And that's where most of the people today are. You know, even the happy people that you see, they're happy. They're, there's a sadness about them. There, there's a lack of something about them. Yes. You know, and you know what I'm talking about. And if you just go on Facebook, you'll see someone smiling in a picture. And then the next day, they have some of the most... Sorrowful stories about themselves or their family that's in there like there's no hope at all. But there is a hope. And his Amen. name is Jesus Christ, yes. praise Amen. God. So, 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 so the Hebrew language meant to turn around. So what that means, I need to turn around. And someone said, well, I've heard, I've heard messages about repentance before. Because here's the point. 
If I don't turn around and go to God, if I don't have a change of mind and, and faith only in godly things, I'm not truly repentant. Repentance isn't just crying out. Repentance is crying out and not wanting that old life again. Amen. So if we're going back to that old life all the time, that tells me and that tells yourself, and I'm not pointing fingers, I don't do that in this church, but we need to tell ourselves, I need to get back on my prayer boats. I need to totally repent Amen. of what I'm doing and what I'm thinking and what I'm not doing, praise God. A changing of one's mind. i got to focus on Christ. I gotta focus on the high calling. I gotta focus on the prize. I gotta focus on Jesus, praise God. I gotta keep my mind on Jesus. Well, you got all these other problems, all that. I can't think about those problems because the Bible tells me to cast all my worries, troubles, and cares upon Him, for He cares for me. I can't lean to my understanding. I gotta lean and trust in God. So I need, Sister Kim, to focus on Him. I need to focus on Christ Himself. Amen. But the problem is this. Here's how we tell if we really have a repentant heart. Hallelujah. We start to do something and start thinking, how's this going to help me? How's this going to help me? How's it going to help, even if it's for a good thing, my ministry? How's it going to help the church? How's it going to help them? Here's a repentant heart. A repentant heart would say, how is this going to give glory to God? How is this going to give glory to God? If what I'm about to do, is this going to give glory to God? Let's get ourselves out of it and not worry about what we're doing for ourselves and what we're doing for, for other people, but is it going to give God glory? Is it giving Him glory? So the first step, the first step is what Peter said. What must we do? Peter said, and then repent. Repent. You can never find true faith in the faith that you want until you re truly, truly have repented. Yes. Truly, truly have repented. Now, I'm not saying that if somebody falls short and they fall and they fail because I fell God every day. And I repent every day. But if we see a new brother or sister or even an old brother or sister in Christ and they slip and fall, there's a big difference in slipping and falling for a moment and living in sin habitually. And you said yeah. something earlier. Well, we are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, so we don't post. But you know what? We, we, we don't, we're not saved to sin. We're not saved, and, and that doesn't give us a license to sin. If we're truly converted, we don't want to sin. If we truly are converted, we don't have a license to sin. If we're truly converted, we won't sin. But thank God the Bible tells me that if we do want sin, I have an advocate with the Father, which is our Lord Jesus Christ. I can ask for repentance. I can ask for, the, for salvation Acts 3.19, if you turn there for a moment. Acts 3.19. The Word of God says in 3.19. Here's the Word. Repent! Before I do anything, i got to do what? Repent! told this to a few people. Let me share this story. My one daughter, I won't mention her name, was going to a little church and uh, she was going to church with her husband and there was a six weeks course, Brother Jose, about the reason why we get baptized. Yes. Now there's nothing wrong in going through the course, but I don't think it's needed either. That's up to the church and, and the people that are involved. But there was a six week course on why to be baptized, and she was so excited to tell me, Dad, I'm going to be baptized in a few weeks. I'm going to finish my course. And I knew her life. She's my daughter. For those that have kids, you know, we don't know their heart at times, but we know how they live and what they yes. do or don't do. And I, her husband was sitting on the couch, and she was standing up excited, and I said, Lord, I don't want to quench her spirit. I don't want to quench anything. I know she's excited about the church. I said, but I have to ask this. If I didn't ask her, I, you know, it wouldn't be right. I said, have you given your heart to Jesus Christ? And she said, no, but I'm going to be baptized. As a baby girl, the baptism doesn't save you. I believe in baptism. But when
what saves you is our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. Amen. Call in the name of Jesus. Amen. To be Lord and God of your life. The baptism is something that you do. Yes. But you give your heart first. You repent. Oh, amen. Amen. You repent. Amen. And then you get baptized. Oh, yes. We had a sister that came up here, and and uh, she came up for our dinners that we give out here, and she said, Pastor Ray, did you see what they put on Facebook yesterday? Wasn't that such a blessing? They were calling for people to go to Lake Erie and be baptized, and they baptized 17 people yesterday. Aren't How you excited that? about that? It must have been my demeanor. And she goes, oh, what's wrong? I, I, you don't seem to be overly... Like joyful about that. I said, well, the baptism is good. But in all the articles that they put on Facebook and what they were talking about is, oh, you don't want to be baptized. Come on up and we're going to take you on the lake and baptize you. That's a great witness. Everybody there that's sunbathing and out there with their kids, they see all these people being baptized. That's good. But I said, you know, one thing I never heard is anyone speak directly about Jesus Christ or speak about forgiveness or the remission of sins or salvation. I said, the baptism doesn't save you. Well, some people came out, they were shouting, and they might have already given their hearts to God. Or it could have been a type of enthusiasm that we get in the flesh that we're just excited about what we did. But when the rubber meets the road, when the real meets the real, have we truly, truly given our hearts to Jesus Christ? That's what has to come first. Unless we truly repent, we're not saved. Unless we truly have given our hearts to Jesus, we're not saved. Now, one day, you might wake up and not feel saved. I felt that. I, I said, have you ever uh, laid there with your grandkids? And I love my grandkids. I know all of you would give your life for your grandkids. But there's times I woke up in moments where I just don't have any feelings at all for some reason. It's just not there. But I know in my mind that I do love them. I know in my mind I'm going to take care of them. Sometimes you may not feel what you want to feel from God. I didn't feel that excitement that we had last night. But I know I'm going to feel it again. Because I know God lives with me. As the sister said, he'll never leave me nor forsake me. He's with me right now, Brother Jose. Amen. He's never going to go away. He's not going to leave you either. He's not going to leave you, Soya. He's Amen. here right now with us every day. We may not feel it. We may not feel him. But in my mind, I know what his holy word says. In my mind, I know what it says. I've been forgiven in my sins. My sins are as far as the east from the west. My sins are in the sea of forgetfulness. I am a brand new creation in Christ Jesus. I am brand new, and you are brand new too. Listen to what I'm saying. I may not feel that. I might not get that excited. I might just be sitting down, and I might be talking to myself and say, Lord, I'm not jumping and shouting. Lord, I feel so distant from you. I can't feel you at all, Lord. But I know that you're here. I know that you're here. I know you haven't left me. What I call a little bit of heaven and earth, it's so good when we can feel the manifestation of God. When we can feel his holy presence. When we can feel that awesomeness where you're just saying, man, I feel God. Hallelujah. I felt that prayer. We say that. And we sing like, Holy Ghost, come on down. He's already here. He's already here. Lord, I need, he's already here. He's within you, around you, upon you. He's everywhere, praise God. Yes. And he said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. Don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, praise God. So he's already here for the believer. But I, if I truly have not repented in my heart, some people need to hear this. We had a lady that had been going to church, Bob, for many, many years. Maybe you've experienced this yourself at church. She would help at church. She was a little, had bad legs. Bigger, heavy set woman. We loved her dearly. I'm not going to mention her name right now. Some of you know her. She would walk with a walker, and she'd come into another church we were at, and she would try to pick up the papers off the floor and books and do that. She'd go with the, with the sister at that time that was one of the ministers of the church, and they go out and eat, go to different places, and she'd sing songs and stand up in the choir and sing. Well, before we opened up the church here, I was up with the pastor. I was just an associate pastor, and we called for an altar, altar call as we do at the end of the service. If anybody wants to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, come forth. And she came up. She started to come up. So we, had, we prayed for her legs many a time, so we thought maybe she wanted to pray for her legs. And I went down as I do, and Sister, what can I 
come in agreement with or what can we pray with as well? And she says, I want to give my heart to Jesus Christ. Amen. The church wasn't really any bigger than this, and somebody in the back, I'm not going to mention name, shouted out out of ignorance, God forgive them. I thought she was already saved. And did it about that loud. But it didn't detour her. She stood up there. And we prayed for her. She gave her heart to Jesus Christ. She had been in an altar line many years before. And had given her heart to Jesus. But she had some baggage that she kept behind. She didn't give him everything. And she didn't repent. She wanted to truly repent. And give 100% of herself. To submit herself under the authority of Jesus Christ. That happened to us personally, so I know that for a fact. Later when we opened the church here about eight years ago, guess who followed? She came. And she came. And, and she had hip, hip, hip surgery. And, and uh, hip surgery was great. But she was at a nursing home recovering from the hip surgery. And so that little bill took her. And she fell over next breath dead of a heart attack. It was her time to go home. But we had a great funeral. Because we know that all she did, and I was telling her brother earlier, you know, we never die as Christians. We never die. We just change a dress. Yes. She changed her dress from Lorraine, Ohio, to the city of heaven, praise God. She is in the, she's in the arms of Jesus, praise God. Now, this is a third-party story. I was telling my daughter this to hit home for her. This daughter of a pastor had been in the church over 20 years doing Sunday school, singing in the choir, helping out with all the, the decent-sized church. There are a few hundred people in the church, and all these great things for the church. And her father would have an altar call every service. Well, they had a guest speaker in, a guest pastor in, preacher in, preaching the word. And the preacher invited the pastor to come back up to have a prayer line in the altar call. And the pastor waved to the, go oh, ahead, yeah, just go ahead. And so the young man says, if anybody wants to give their life to Jesus Christ, then come on up and we'll pray with you. The back of the church, they heard somebody get up. And the father's eyes opens up real wide. And here his adult daughter that's in her 40s is coming up Jesus. to give her heart to oh, Jesus yeah, Christ. And this was a man of discernment. This was a man that knew God. But he pulled her aside later and says, honey, I thought you had given your heart to God laid for years ago when you're in your teen years. She goes, Dad, I went through some words, but she goes, I never felt like I really had repented. I never felt it. Today I felt it. Today I have it. Repentance. You know, we can talk about being sorry as much as we want, but if we're not repentant, we have a big, 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 big problem, praise God. Thank you, sweet Jesus. I love all the kisses. Second Peter, I don't know if we covered that yet, 3.9. The Lord is not slacking concerning his promise, as many men count slackness, but is long-suffering, in other words, patient towards us, not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. Say repentance. Pray repentance. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you sweet Jesus. Praise God. Matthew 3 8 talks about repentance. Listen to this. I'm going to read from the Amplified. King James says, Bring forth therefore fruits, meat for repentance. But here's the Amplified explaining a little bit more. Bring forth fruit that is consistent with repentance. Let your lives prove your change of heart. Our lives are a talking Bible. Our lives are going to show those around us if we truly, truly have repented. If we truly, truly have turned to God, praise God. Luke 17, 3 talks about forgiveness, and this is Jesus speaking to the disciples. Luke 17, 3 says this. Take heed to yourself, says thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day he turn again, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. That wasn't just instructions to us. It was instructions to tell us what our Heavenly Father does. Yes. You know what? We're not going to find forgiveness 
until we repent. It's not just coming to church. It's not just saying a sinner's prayer. It's having a change of mind. Not just a change of heart. A change of mind. Going into a different direction. My change of mind, I need to focus on Jesus Christ. I need to not go to, the, to, to this uh, over here. I need to turn about, make a 180 degree turn. I need to go to Jesus, praise God. Amen. I need to give him everything. Lord. So today, and I'm going to continue on this for maybe a couple weeks. We might hit with the teaching this week too on Tuesday. As Christians, I know you've already dealt with this, uh, Sister Sheila, Sister Kim, in your ministry. How many times have you had a, a young lady or a young man or an old lady or old man, it doesn't matter, come to you and they're going through issues and they're going through problems and they just feel like giving up life itself or just giving up everything. And, and uh, they just got so many things going on in their life. They say, I don't know if this church thing is really working for me. I, I don't know, you know, if, if uh, you know, I'm truly forgiven. or I, 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 I have all these issues. I have all these problems. And, and why did, didn't God answer my my prayers when I wanted him to. And we'll say things, well, it's God's time and that's this. You know what the problem really is? They haven't totally repented. They haven't totally given it to God. They haven't totally did a 180 degree turn to go to him and understand that, you know what? I don't care what I'm going through. God is going to get me through somehow. Amen. Even the sea, he did not remove the sea from Moses and from the Hebrew children. The sea was still there. He just parted the sea so they could get across. Oh, yes. Sometimes the problem is not going to go away, but God will get you through it and sustain you and hold you up, praise God. I remember one time I had to have an electric bill, and I'm going to end it with this. God is, is telling me to close out with this. Listen to this. Thank God. And I was new in the church. I had to come up with, I don't know, four or $500 for an electric bill. I already had a disconnection notice of the house. You know, it's how we, everybody, I might even see a show of hands here. Get one of those. And I wasn't working at that time, going through a bad time. And, and Tabitha was just a little baby. I'm trying to raise her. And uh, I actually closed up my business to raise my daughter. And I'm on my hands and knees praying at the young preacher. And I said, Lord, I trust in you that you're going to work something. My trust is in you, so I'm not going to worry. I'm giving it all to you. So I had a moment of relief. So I get off my, and I'm in my bedroom. I get up on my, off my knees. I'm standing like this. And I hear, ding dong. I look out my bedroom window, and yes, there's a <laughs> first energy truck out in front of my driveway. I'm going, ah! You know how your heart just goes out? I just felt so good for a moment. God's going to take it. So I go to the door. I'm going to van up. I'm going to go to Go to the door and be a man. I open up the door, and he's got a white paper in his hand. He says, "Are you Mr. Smith? Hey, sir. I wanted to drop this off and all that. Uh, you had a disconnection notice, but I wanted to leave this. I was going to leave it on your door, but since you passed the door, I just give it to you. If you come up with seventy-nine dollars and thirty-nine cents within the next five days, which I had eighty dollars in the bank, he says they'll prevent your shutoff. You still owe a balance of X number of dollars. And he handed me the paper, and he walked away. I'm going, Lord, you did come through." Oh, yes. I did have the eighty dollars oh, yes. to keep it on, and I did have the money within the other time to pay off the balance. So he, he comes through. Yes. He comes through. Amen. But on the other side of the coin, I lost a house after becoming a Christian. My work was bad, and you know how you do things out of desperation. How many people know you can't borrow yourself out of debt? Amen. Yeah. I went and got a mortgage. On the house, refinanced my house, and this is worth listening to for some people. My house was half paid for at the time, but I went and got a mortgage because I had old IRS some money they wrecked me for years, so I got to pay them off, the sales tax, pay them off because of my business and, and all the other creditors and all. I'm paying everybody off. So my balance went, whoa, but it was on an adjustable rate mortgage. That I did not understand completely. The same company has been sued and no longer in business since then. They were, were a national company. I'm not going to mention their name. But within two years, my mortgage went up, and then it went up, and my house payment went from six ninety to fourteen hundred ninety five dollars a month, and it was still going up. Now that was robbery. <laughs> I could not afford my house payment. 
So if I'm getting too much behind, I'm like $3,000 on the hole. Right. I get three months behind going on three months, you get $9,000 in the hole. And how many people know they don't want a partial payment when you're behind? They want everything. So I ended up losing my house. And I prayed to save that house. God had a good plan. Better plan. Yes. Better plan. So God still took care of my needs and my wants too. That's another story for another day. Sometimes when we take a loss, it's not really a loss. It's just moving us into a different direction or something better. There's a picture on Facebook. It shows Jesus, and, and there's a little girl in front of him, and he's holding his hand out to her to give the teddy bear to him. And she's handing it to him reluctantly and a little sad. But what she doesn't see is that behind him, he's holding a big, giant teddy bear to replace that one with. Sometimes what we think is a loss is really a blessing. Sometimes when people are out of our lives, we think that's a loss. That's a blessing too, praise God. Sometimes God will cause a separation. Not that there's wrong with the other person. There may not be anything wrong at all. But God does that because he's the one that's maneuvering everybody, maneuvering them. If we listen to his voice, if we listen to his spirit, praise God. So what we think is a loss can really be a great thing. I wasn't going to bring that up to you, but evidently somebody needed to hear that. You might be going through a loss or a type of loss. It really can be a great thing, praise God. One more story. <laughs> Sister Kim said, you said that 20 minutes ago. I remember when I was leaving Praise and Worship Church, and we had a picnic with them yesterday, visit. Great church. I love everybody there. Brother Mundy's gone on to be with the Lord, but his son, Buddy Mundy, is the pastor there. So uh, his name is James Mundy, too, so we still have Brother Mundy. Church, praise God. And we know Brother Herschel goes there, and, and I know you know Brother Herschel Polly. Probably, probably Brother Herschel Polly is here probably what half the time we got church. He'll be yeah. here probably tonight. Yeah, he will. Uh, he was here Thursday night playing and stuff. Good man of God. So, anyhow, God was dealing with me to leave that church to go to another little church not far from here to help them, to be a help. Now, I, I never considered myself a teacher or a preacher, even though. Uh, they ordained me, and they let me preach about every five months or so. That was all right, and we started to go out on our own and preach here and there every month uh, by renting a little room out of faith, and God always supplied the needs for that. But I didn't want to go. But how many people know sometimes you might not want to do something, but God is instructing you to do something? Amen. We've all gone through that. Now, some of them say, is it just me? Well, when God truly is speaking to you, you know that it's God. And I remember going up to Pastor Monday, I said, Pastor, God has shown me to go and help this church to be a help. They already had a pastor and assistant pastor. I was looking to be a pastor. I had somebody offer me a pastorship about a year or two before that, and I laughed at him and said, I'm not a pastor. I'm not a, I'm not a preacher. I'm not a pastor, but I'll help the church. I can get ministers in there. I can be, I can be the guy behind the scenes and work. It took me two and a half months to finally go to the other church after being asked and asked and asked. Well, I really feel that God uses all that church. Somebody said, you're going into the lion's den. But I said, yeah, but God was in the lion's den too. He closed the mouth. Yes, he did. Lion. Long story short, and I'm not going to get into our history, that church was supposed to have moved here. But the pastor closed the church down and went to a different venue with a different church and the entire church followed so we weren't going to take this place as church but lo and behold God had a different plan yes, did. I remember Brother Monday sitting up in the front pew one time after we opened the church he said, brother you know I didn't want you to go but he said I'm glad you did because I miss you at every church service but he said God was showing you to do something I'm not tooting word of life's horn. I'm not patting myself or anybody else on the back. I'm just saying, God, listen to him. Listen to him. He'll guide you in the right direction. He'll guide you in the right direction. So if you're taking a loss, God's got something better for you. But repent. Repent. I'm going to continue that message tonight. Repent. That's where it starts. 
you know, we have to have a firm foundation. If you're building something and that foundation isn't is it solid, it's gonna it's gonna shift and everything else, okay, and even fall. So one of the first pillars is yep. repenting, repenting, yeah. truly yeah. repenting, yes. having a change of mind and going in another direction. Praise Amen. God. I really pray that you got something out of today's message. I thank you for reading the word. I thank you, Sister Heather and Sister Kim, for singing and playing. And Brother Bob, I thank you, Lord, for that. that, that. Thank you, Bob, for that. that God, God the, the Lord put, you, put that in your heart to share that. That was good. Praise God. Six words. Yeah. Six word prayer, praise God. Yeah. I love you guys. Love you too, Sherry. Praise God. Anyway, you all stand.